Hello, YouTubers. Well, we're having awful weather. Now, I know a lot of people on the eastern seaboard of the United States, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, they're having a lot of snow. Today, we're having 10 to 15 millimeters of rain and uh, winds like you wouldn't believe. So if you hear howling, you'll know what it's all about. I think we got 100 kilometer hour winds or up to 130 kilometer hour wind gusts and it's uh, it's not a nice day out there. We had uh, about a half inch of snow last night but of course as soon as the rain started gone and now it's supposed to stay like this till this evening and freeze so just finished up some jobs here in the shop and of course our air freight was uh, cancelled due to the weather the bad weather on the mainland so the jobs that I had remaining here, I didn't want to do this afternoon, so I said I'm going to uh, stop and I'm going to do a little hobble for myself. And basically what I plan on doing is this here is an attachment that I built for the plasma cutter oh, a few years back. I'm using a uh, Miller-Matic, no, nope, sorry, I'm using a Miller Spectrum 875 plasma. And this here is a little system that I made up for cutting circles. And uh, it works really well. There's no doubt about it. It's magnetic and you just stick it on and you cut it out. But I'm going to look for something a little bit different and something a little bit easier for setting up, something quicker. So I got this piece of scrap one inch flat bar. And I'm basically going to punch some holes in it. I'm going to thread one end and you'll see what I'm up to. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is just have this where it'll be going around in a circle. So I figured, heck, you know, I'm doing it. So uh, I'll take you along and, and show you what, uh, what it's going to work like or if it's going to work at all. I really don't know. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, I got holes set every three quarter inches. No, sorry, every five eight inches. And uh, I'm going to punch them out with the uh, Edwards iron worker. And then I'm going to have a couple, uh, probably three offset holes here that's going to be threaded and uh, you'll see exactly what I'm going to do with that uh, now shortly. So I got to head over to the iron worker and I got to change over some uh, punches and some dies. So let's go have a look. Okay, so here we are. I'll move that light so you're not blinded by the light. Remember that song, guys? And I'm going to remove this because we won't need this. And I'll just lay that here on the, uh, the back of the machine. And then this is, as you know from the last video that I did on this machine, this is called a stripper. So we're going to loosen up that stripper so we can get at the punch and die. So I'm going to loosen up the die nut clamp below on the table. And we're going to remove the punch. And this is how you do it. Right like that. Right like that. So, because the last time I showed you the uh, iron worker, I didn't show you how they change. And this is basically how it's held in. So we'll take that one out. And we're going to put in a 7 16th. This is an inch and 1 16th. And uh, there's the difference, guys. So we'll... Uh, We'll plop that in, we'll take out our die, and we'll put in the die that coincides for that 7 16 punch. And make sure he's tight, tightened in. And we'll just simply take the punch and drop them down here. Now, if you're using square punches, or you're using uh, elongated punches, or oblong gauges or punches, you'll you'll have a quarter slot cut in them, and you'll uh, lay a key a key in it, so that way it's indexed properly with the one on the table. And uh, there's a slot cut up here as well. But for the round ones that don't matter, they don't need to be indexed for the uh, die. So hopefully you guys can hear me now because we're gone on uh, wireless again. I'm having a little bit of trouble adjusting the volume, so hopefully it'll be okay. And you just tighten it in like that. Now, 
when you go to put down the stripper, you'll notice that there's a big hole here in the stripper. Well, this here is an adapter that you can get for it, and it goes on over here, and it makes the hole much smaller, as you can see. I suppose you can see it. I hope you can see it. Here, let me move it this way so you can see it. Sorry about moving the camera, guys. But here you go. See, you can... Normally, it just has this big opening, and that's okay to use. The problem is with it, when you're punching something thin and something narrow, it's got a tendency to want to warp or cup up on you when you're punching it. So when you add this to the stripper, it uh, makes the area much smaller and less chance of warpage. So, but you've got to do it this way first. So you're going to put it up like that. I have a squat my fingers at this sometimes. So we're just going to put this in as a guide and get it down as close to the material as possible without actually touching it because you don't want to have it too tight where you can't move it around. And we're just going to tighten it up. And hopefully it will work okay. There you go. Now, I'll just uh, move the camera down a bit so you can see what I mean. Okay. So yeah, so it's, uh, it's easy to move, maneuver. And it's essential that you tighten the stripper down a lot because, or quite tight, because you don't want it moving or going out of adjustment when you're punching. Now, I usually have a system that I clamp onto the table to get the right distance, but in this case, I'm only punching one eighth, and that's one quarter, so I'm just gonna have to put a temporary guide there in the back, and of course, it'll have to be one eighth because of the height of the stripper. And once I get it adjusted up, we'll come back and we'll do some punching. Okay, guys, what I got done here, you can see I got a temporary fence made. And uh, basically, it's just a guide. Hopefully, I got it set up enough where the holes are going to be dead center. But in this case, it's really not that, you know, serious if it's not. It's, uh, you know, it's basically just going to be a, uh, a cutter. A little bit tight there so what I may end up having to do is just slack up that stripper again there might be a, sm a slight bend in this uh, in this flat bar because this is a bit of scrap that I've been using excuse me for a second guys I'll go over and give this just a little bit of a, a pounding and that way I might be able to uh, to get it better yeah, I would have liked to use a bit of stainless, but I never had any stainless, so. And, uh, yeah, see, there you go. It's better. So I'm going to punch, oh, my Lord, there's a pile of holes here. So I'm going to punch all those out, and then we'll uh, see what it looks like. I'll move the camera in closer, so maybe you can see some of the uh, punching process. Okay, guys, I got the camera moved. I don't know how much of this you can actually see because it's, uh, this is a bit dirty. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get to it and see what happens. So we'll start off down here. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Better get a flashlight so I can see the uh, the marks in there. Let's see. It don't have to be dead on, but it would be nice. They're pretty close to center, so I'm okay with that.
And as you can see with the stripper close, I'm not getting any uh, warpage, so which is pretty good. So I'm going to continue on and cut these other holes. I'm going to stagger them a little bit. They all don't have to be the same distance apart, just in the ballpark. So that way I can use different holes for different diameters. Okay, so we got a little bit of, a little bit of cupping, nothing too serious. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight seven-sixteenth holes. So they might not be perfect, but they're perfect holes. It's just that I'm not too particular about if they're dead center or not, because it's really not. It don't matter for what it's doing. And uh, here is the tip, belong to the uh, 875 plasma. And uh, here's how it fits in the hole. Hang on, guys. I'll move that. Turn off that light there. Yeah. So it fits the hole very, very nicely. So I think we're going to be able to make something of this. So now what I got to do is I got to uh, drill a hole here, and that's going to be my anchor point for the uh, for the unit. So I'll go and do that, and then I'll tap it out. So I got it uh, drilled and tapped. It's a uh, a quarter inch bolt, 20 threads per inch, and it called for drilling out the hole uh, number seven drill bit. So that's done. And uh, it's coming along nicely. So as you can see, there's the thread. Now, let me see if I can find the bolt. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the bolt in here, like so. And then I had this uh, kit that I bought at Prince's Auto. And it's full of uh, wing nuts. So I found one that'll fit there. So that's part of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over to the iron work and I'm going to nibble off the corners here and just round them out with the uh, disc grinder uh, with the flappy disc on it. And then we'll make that look a little bit tidier. Okay, so I have the edges rounded out now. And uh, I'm just going to put the bolt in there now and we'll have another look at it and see what it looks like. So there it is. So the next thing to do is try it and see if it works. So let's measure this just to see exactly how long that I, I built it because I don't know, I never really looked. So this one is exactly 19 inches long. So what I've done is I drilled a hole, quarter inch, in the plate. And then I'll put the wing nut just down below it so you guys will see for the first time if this is any good or not a bit of old scrap 1-8 plate that I had there so I'll uh, I'll use that so hopefully we'll be able to cut a round hole with it I mean you know you can get a, a big circumference on a 19 inch hole and of course these things here I mean basically cost nothing to uh, to make a bit of scrap so it's a relatively uh, well it's an easy project it's a cheap project and uh, I can see it being a useful tool to have around like I say there's there's not much to it even if you got to drill the holes it's worth doing it it's a lot simpler than, than what I did make in the past. So, we shall see. I could probably see maybe putting the handle on here 
Yeah, cutting a bigger hole with it would probably be easier than cutting a small one. But uh, I'm just going to go in, if I can go in four, let me see if I can get in, let's see here now, let me see, let's see what happens here. Yeah, okay, we'll try this and just see what happens. There you go, guys. That's your hole. So that's in uh, that's in the fourth one in. So we're looking at a three and a half inch in diameter round plate. So you can keep on going. The bigger the hole, the better it's going to be. So. Let me tip this up so you can see me, guys. Yeah, so the bigger, the, the, uh, the bigger, the higher you go, the easier it's gonna be to cut. For the small holes, maybe better just to have a, a shorter one of these. I don't know, you know? One thing about it, when you make it this long, you've got it good for everything else. And uh, with regards to the hole in the center of the plate, well, all you have to do is just butt weld that over and take your flap disc to it and you're good to go. So no big deal. That's the compressor running in the background, guys. So sorry about that, but that's got to be in the shop. So that's a small project, very simple, inexpensive. It's a no-brainer, and of course, it's a must-have when you have a plasma cutter. Not everybody has CNC equipment, so lots of times you can, uh, you'll get a job, and I know lots of times I've had to cut holes, you know, and uh, round circles, and, uh, you know, had to make up that other one. And that other one worked well, but sure the magnet on the other one is as big as that. So it kind of got in my way. And I could go smaller. I, I could actually cut this uh, inch and a half in diameter if I wanted to go in the center hole. So, yeah, I think it's well worth the, probably what, the hour and a half that it took to bake it. So sometimes, you know, you look back at our videos and they're complicated. And sometimes I like to make stuff non-complicated. It don't have to be polished. I don't intend on sandblasting it and painting it. Matter of fact, when the video is over, I'm going to hang it up there by the neck by the other one. And I'm going to wait till one of those days that I need it. And, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to use it. So on a day when you have nothing to do or you don't want anything to do, like in my case, it was a nice little project and a reason to, uh, to make a little video that uh, may help somebody out. So thanks for watching, guys. If you want to make some comments on it, you can. If you don't, that's fine as well. But uh, like I say, simple project and uh, inexpensive. Not often I can say that around here, I'll tell you. Even the wife is not going to believe me in this case. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other. Take care. Be careful out there. The weather is terrible. And uh, God bless.